This is Sir Colossus on the morning of the 10th of August 2005 and we now have quite a lot more of Colossus working. We'll wheel start positions and so if we uh, set the both wheels to, to, to one there using the SU switch that's now put both, both wheels into the one position there and we can now um, we can now step through uh, one one position at a time on K2. So if we put the K2 switch down, and then we and then we do the we do the stepping, um, we can now step that one. So there it goes. Now. Nine. And there, that has printed 09. A, which is the first counter, 3011. So that's found the correct.
、でそれからあのこれは初級者ボードなんですけども、ちょっと上級者ボードで表情も連動させるということがあると思います。ちょっとそれも画面を上げると、変な形で。Now, the NLOS cannon joins the PZH-2000 by doing most of the work by itself. The automated artillery system of the NLOS cannon really reduces the strain on day-to-day -day soldier activity. It automatically selects the correct ammunition, sets the fuse, loads the shell, selects the right amount of propellant, loads the propellant, and then aims and fires the gun. All of that in 10 seconds. And all this can be achieved with just a two-man crew. 20 seconds after the, the vehicle or the crew receives a fire mission, the first round is downrange. Can can fire then six rounds in a minute. Uh, and for survivability, that vehicle can then displace 20 seconds after that last round has been fired. Three columns, one five zero plus. They want that command. A lightweight composite armor is just the start of the NLOS cannon's self-protection measures. An active defense system also detects and destroys incoming grenades, missiles, or artillery rounds. You can engage more targets. You can reduce the number of people, actually, that you have to deploy in combat, so you can be more survivable. The NLOS is quick on the draw and also fast on its feet, enabling the crew to get in and out of battle quickly and quietly. You've got a hybrid electric drive. Uh, that knows what the power demand on the vehicle is, how much power am I using, how fast am I going, so that it's always operating at its peak efficiency. The diesel engine also charges a lithium-ion battery, so the NLOS can travel at up to 55 miles an hour and do it quietly. We save fuel, we provide more power, and we do that very intelligently. Battery power alone lasts up to 20 minutes, and with weight-saving rubber band tracks, it can sneak up on the enemy and give it a big surprise. What it gives you is a 155 howitzer artillery shell with state-of-the-art electronics, battle command technologies, and lightweight armor composites so that you can bring more to the battlefield with more technology at a much lighter weight than existing armored vehicles. It's more accurate uh, and it's more easily resupplied. It's more effective, it's more lethal, it's more technologically advanced. It lets soldiers have all of the benefits, all the effectiveness, all the lethality. It, it is an ultimate weapon. With the development budget for future combat systems already topping $150 billion, the true cost of the NLOS cannon is hard to measure, but it may well be worth every cent. China's Tianhe 1A supercomputer overtakes its U.S. rivals to become the world's fastest computer. The supercomputer will be used to aid weather forecasts and help locate undersea oil fields, among other uses. With horsepower equivalent to 175,000 laptops, China's Tianhe 1A supercomputer has been named the fastest computer in the world, overtaking rival units in the U.S. and Germany. Located at China's National Supercomputer Center in Tianjin, the Tianhe 1A has topped the top 500 supercomputers list. Tianhe 1A is nearly